What's up guys, it's Instinct here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to do this really cool uh, ice shatter advertisement for G Fuel. I took this the ice shatter can and I added a really cool ice effect to it, added some particles and ice particles and some brushes and just kind of blended it in with this like icy space uh, like background, like wallpaper. And I think it turned out really, really good. Um, I, so I thought I'd show you guys how to do that. Also guys, my Discord link will be linked in the description along with all my other links like Twitter and Instagram. And also my portfolio which I finally made so go ahead and click the link in the description and you guys can follow me or support me if you guys like. I'm always active in my Discord server and I'm always posting content on my portfolio and my Twitter so those are the best places to go if you're trying to get a hold of me or if you guys have or, or if you guys need help with something and just to see my work and stay updated with me. So if you guys would like to do that, then uh, of course the link will be in the description. One last thing, I will be including all the pictures and images used for this manipulation in the description below completely for free. And if we hit 50 likes, I will be giving away the entire Photoshop document of the original uh, design, manipulation uh, advertisement design. With all that said guys, let's jump right into this tutorial. All right, so once you head into Photoshop, as you guys can see, I already have everything we need. And of course, like I said before, the link will be in the description if you guys want to go ahead and follow along. So first first off, we're gonna take the uh, G Fuel can and we're gonna hit Control U and we are just gonna drag the saturation all the way down to make this a black and a white. So go ahead and click OK and we're just gonna enable the, label the, or rename this can uh, and press Enter. Or double click on it, by the way, to rename it. All right, so once we have our can, we're just gonna hit Control J a couple of times to make some duplicates. And I'm actually gonna name this can backup just in case we mess up, so can backup. All right, so once we, once we have that, go ahead and click on the middle layer and just go to filter and go to filter gallery and go in under artistic folder and click plastic wrap uh, make sure this is at 20, the detail is at 15, and the smoothness is at 8. Um, and you can actually click this button right here to zoom out uh, and see what it looks like. And go click, go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, it looked like nothing happened, but that's because we have a layer above it. So once we turn this layer off, we will be able to see it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control i on our keyboard. That will invert it, so now it is black. And go ahead and go to the blending mode and choose Screen. As you guys can see, we're already starting to get this little ice effect on the can, but we're going to keep going, of course. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go ahead and toggle the top one on, and we're going to go and basically do the same thing again. So go to Filter Gallery, apply on the top one as well. Um, I'm actually kind of doing this out of order. Um, let's see, I should have done, um, let's see, Control i invert that. Or, no, 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 it was already inverted. All right, so yeah, so Control J, my bad. You should have done it that way. Um, but either way, uh, both ways work. So again, turn off the top one and go to, the, so we're on the middle one. And go to Filter and we're gonna go to Filter Gallery once more. And we are gonna go to Distort and we're gonna go to Glass. And this is where we get like the cool, like little frost, icy kind of look. And again, go to Distortion 5, Smooth 3, and Scaling at 190%, and we're gonna click OK. And we're gonna turn this layer on, and now we basically have the ice effect going. Uh, now we're just gonna have to fine tune the colors and do some color corrections and tinting and all that stuff. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna go to the top one, and we're gonna go to Adjustments, and we are going to click um, Hue and Saturation and nothing is going to happen because it's black and white. Now what we want to do is uh, create a new layer under that and uh, just get a blue sample blue from like the background. So like something like this looks good um, and get your brush and just kind of brush over it. Um, create a clip mask and just start shading in the, the can like so. From here we can um, mess around with the blending mode um, to get something like nice. So maybe like I think I want to try screen. There's a lot of good options you guys could try here. Maybe like hard light would be good. 
I honestly have no idea what I did before, so I'm not gonna like completely remake it, but I'm gonna try to do my best. Um, I think color dodge um, looks pretty good. Uh, let's see, we can lower down the opacity and just kind of mess around with this. Now, I will say a lot of this tutorial is just kind of messing around with things. And I'm going to try my best to make this tutorial not too lengthy. Alright, so I am just going to, like, turn this down a little bit. We can always add another layer. Um, so I'm actually going to do that uh, now. I will say there's a million ways to do, like, all the little things I'm doing in this tutorial. So if you guys know a better way, uh, please comment below or just, you know, just experiment. Um, and you guys can get different looks and do, like, all sorts of different, like, styles this is very customizable uh but yeah let's get right back into the tutorial all right so i'm gonna drag or i'm gonna grab this blue and i'm gonna get like a lighter uh, version because ice is uh, basically white um, but obviously we're gonna add like a bluish tint to make it look like icy like water you know so um let's see I'm just like uh basically just kind of Fill in the entire thing and see. I think ooh, I think soft light looks pretty nice with this blue. Maybe turn this down a little bit, um, like so. Um, just mess around, like I keep saying. Also, like I said before, um, there's basically no way for me to get it exactly like I had it before. I'm just gonna simply try my best to like remake it, but and show you guys like what I did. So now we're gonna go to this hue and saturation layer, and we're just gonna mess around with the saturation, drag this up a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna hit Control Z and create a clip mask. So now this is only affecting this can or this layer right here, um, and we're just gonna. You can mess around with hue, but there's really no reason to. And so now what we can do is just kind of bump the saturation down and get more of a like icy look and maybe um, increase like the, the lightness a little bit and go to adjustments again and go to uh, levels and drag the whites up um, like so and create the clipping mask. And this will just kind of enhance the ice a little bit more, make the uh, highlights come out more. Now, uh, one thing I have noticed about this particular like uh, can render is that um, like there's this little bar of light. Like if I hide everything, this like little highlight right here, which is very annoying because this is uh, like the shadows, like where the darker side is. So we're just gonna have to um, mask that out. So if I turn everything back on, uh, we're going to go to the uh, layer mask here and grab a paintbrush, make a black, um, soft, and with the bracket keys you can control the size and just kind of remove this, kind of like paint over it. And what that does is it subtracts it from the adjustment layer so that we're basically taking this part out so we're not lightening up that part. Um, and Near the end we're gonna shade that part. So I'm just gonna leave it now or leave it be for now So now what we can do is just kind of take everything right and we we're starting to get the frost effect a little bit If I go to like this one, um, obviously I did a really nice job with this one because I took my time um, the, Like the frost effect looks so nice and pops out so much um, but um, Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna Select all the layers basically, except for the backup. And let me, I'm just gonna drag this one under so we don't confuse it with the other layers. Actually, we need that. So I'm gonna control J and slide, uh, put that back there, like so. And just take all these layers, control J uh, and, er, and hit control G. And I forgot because I forgot to add in the textures, let me do that. Um, and this will add some, well, of course, texture, but it'll also help with shading. So if we drag this below um like it will automatically make it a clipping mask you can turn this on and kind of like tilt this and size it down and this will also help with the frost effects as well um, we have too much blue so i might uh mess around with that later and tilt this so it's like kind of like with the same angle as the can so i'm going to turn these two layers off for now 
and let's just kind of see what looks nice. I think linear, I think color dodge is what I did. Um, let's, but let's see what we have. Um, I'm gonna do maybe overlay or overlay and turn these back on to see what this is looking like. And yeah, so as you guys can see, we're starting to get the ice effect where it's starting to pop out. I think if we duplicate this once more um, and hit uh, create clipping mask, um, that might help it a little bit, not really. Um, so I'm going to delete that and we're going to drag this last texture under it like so. And what did I do there? All right, um, we're gonna grab the texture, not the uh, this part. Not that's what what happened, and we're gonna just drag this like so, and move it over um, to where you can start seeing it on the can, and just hit Control T and resize this up, and give it a tilt, like so. Click Enter, and change the blending mode. Um, uh, let's see, I think overlay again looks pretty nice. What else is there? Let's see. Color dodge looks nice as well. Uh, I'm probably gonna go with overlay again. Maybe, yeah, overlay. And let's see, if we take these two off, we're getting a pretty nice effect. You guys can see it's starting to come together. Um, let's see, I'm gonna just kinda turn down the opacity a little bit. Actually, we can leave it at full. Alright, so now we're starting to get the ice effect look, and I'm going to stop right here for now. Actually, what we can do, one last thing, is we can take the, this, the last layer in the group, and we can add a glow. So, add inner glow. Let me move this over to see what this looks like. And, let's see, like, maybe the size of 40-something. Like the opacity up all the way. And... See something kind of like that, maybe. Looks pretty good. Let me change this to white and bring the opacity down a little bit. So, uh, one tip I have for you guys is when you're doing adjustments like this, and this goes for basically everything, always look at the uh, whatever you're doing. For example, like the can. Uh, never go by numbers, just always go off a of look. So as you guys can see, the numbers are kind of random, 76 and 33. I didn't start it at 30, I just kind of went with like how it looks. Just a little tip for you guys. So I wouldn't go off of numbers, I would just go off of how it looks. Um, so like I say, I never really pay attention to too much to the numbers, I just go off of how it looks. And again, we're gonna go down to uh, like Outer Glow, check Outer Glow, and... Alright, so now what we can do is go ahead and start doing some color correction. So what what we want to do is add a vignette around the, the Gfield can. So go ahead and go do elliptical marquee tool and kind of like on, drag a shape like this about the size of the can, a little bit bigger than the can and just kind of like position it um, like so and go to curves on curves that will automatically make a mask for you now if you drag this down we can clearly see what this does and mask the like the curves onto the, the mask that we just made now what we can do is go ahead and go to this little button right here and click invert and go to feather and put this at like 300 pixels around there and just drag this down and you guys can start to see what that does so now we can just drag this down and create like a little bit of a vignette effect so I'll start darkening everything around the can and we can fine tune this a little bit um, like so I'm trying to uh, do this kind of fast so obviously it's not gonna look that great because uh, the tutorial sake because I'm showing you guys how to do this and then you guys can just adjust it however you want but like I said I wouldn't take your time on this I'm not going to obviously for the sake of the tutorial uh, so I'm not entirely sure. I think that looks all right for now. Maybe a little bit darker. Uh, like, like actually, we're gonna go back lighter again. 
like that because we can always create a new layer and just darken it even more with like a brush. Just make it big. Start doing a little bit more. So create the soft light. So and turn the opacity of this down a little bit. See. And that looks pretty nice. So um and drag this below with the curves. go and make another layer and now we can kind of start um, adding some light from the source over here like from like the earth so grab a white brush and just kind of start get like a angle of how you think it would look like that maybe like that and set this to like soft or either normal or soft light and just drag down the opacity um, I'm gonna go with normal and drag down the fill like so like that and now we can make another one and just kind of go uh, add some light from the side like this and soft light we're gonna make this just a little bit so the what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it darker on this side light on this side um, and to help with that a little bit what we're, we're gonna do is go to adjustments and get a gradient map and actually before we do that um, actually just go ahead and put black and white uh, and it's going the right way and if it's not like if white is over here just click reverse but in my case it's going the right way and we can kind of um, mess with the blending modes a little bit and just change this to like 10% so it's very like faint or the back to normal and like I said, go with something like ten percent. It's gonna um, desaturize um, a little bit, but it's all right. So this is already looking all right. I mean, obviously, if I had more time, I would really take my time on this. Well, I'm trying to do everything, just rushing everything. So now, what we can do is start going, go to the effects tab, and now let's start doing the effects. I'm actually going to group all this in just in CC. Uh, turn, have that turned on and name this like cans. Like can. And now what we want to do is we want to or go to the effects and drag the first one above everything. So it's like that. Um, below the CC above the can. And just kind of drag it over to the can like so. A control T sizes down a lot. And I'm actually no, no. We're gonna rotate this so that this little part right here fits perfectly on the can. Like like that. And you guys can hit control T, right click and warp. Just kinda warp this around a little bit. Um, like so. And get your the eraser tool and make sure it's a soft brush and just start erasing around the edges to kind of blend everything in like so perfect uh, one thing I forgot to do is uh, create a hue and saturation layer on the top just kind of increase the saturation up a little bit Maybe add, uh, make it a little bit brighter so we can start getting like a little bit of a fog look. And we can uh, change the hue a little bit to the left, I would say. Make this kind of a more of a lighter blue, like a frostier kind of blue rather than a darker blue. But I think that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna go with like negative four. That looks alright. And what we can do is go to the effect 
I'm just gonna make this effect real quick. Um, and just go ahead and drag the huge saturation layer, get another one, and create clipping mask. And now what we want to do is we want to try to get this blue to match the blue on the can. So it doesn't blend in that well yet. That's why we want to mess around with this. Just kind of dry these sliders until you get the same sort of look. This is the can. Uh, create a layer under the effects tab and we're gonna shade the blue. Get like a more saturated blue. Like sample it from the can. I wanna say something like that. Let's see. Ah. And let's see what we can find. Maybe soft lights. And take that. I'm gonna hide this layer and hit Control U and fine tune it this way. Just make it a little bit saturated, lighter, and slightly more darker blue, like that. And I think that looks all right. Now what we can do. Is I'm actually going to delete this hue and saturation layer. Is basically um, hold shift, select these two layers, duplicate these layers, hit control T, and what we can do is just drag this around to the other side, or actually, even better, on the side of the can to get more randomized. So, that is looking great. Um, go to the eraser tool, obviously, we want to erase this part. Um, oh, just a little bit. We can have it overlapping a little bit. I'm gonna drag the size of my brush down, and make sure it's on soft brush. And I like how it blends in, like right here. I think that looks real. That's a really nice um, uh, example of overlaying the effect on. But I'm just gonna clean up this part right here because I don't like this part how it looks. And of course, you guys could make a layer mask and do it that way. I'm just more used to doing it this way. Well, yeah, I would say making a layer mask is better because you can always change it or just delete it. And I think that's looking a little bit better. Let's zoom out and see how this is looking. It's looking great. Maybe change the opacity down to like 80%. Should be, you know, leave that on. So I think what we want to do is just make it smaller. It's a little bit too big, smaller, like that, and just reposition this. And erase some more. So, and that's it for this particle or effects particles. Now what we can do is drag this one, which is kind of more like a ice shatter, actual legit, like realistic, like an actual ice shatter. And this is way too saturated and way too dark. So what we're gonna do is hit Control U, and like I said before, mash this, um, correct this a little bit. Although, I will say that looks pretty nice. I'm gonna click cancel and do, like, add a hue saturation, adjustment layer, right to click and create a clipping mask, do it this way. Just because I think it will be a little bit easier. Drag the saturation down, click colorize. Um, don't click colorize. Uh, let's see. Take, just take the saturation down a ton. Mess around with 
blue. That's like so. I think that looks all right. And then we can, of course, move this around. So. Control T, rotate this around. Do something like that. Um, move this even closer. Enter. And just erase around it. Actually, no, it looks alright. Control J, or hold Shift, select these two layers, Control J. Drag it up and rotate it, of course, to get like a random or random effect. So, I think that looks alright. I'm gonna take this huge chunk out because I feel like this is making it look like it's copied, and I feel like if I take this out, uh, take this part out right here, then it won't look like it's copied, uh, yeah, like so. I'm gonna go back down to the uh, the first effect, so like this one, and I'm gonna mess around with the blending mode. Um, softly. I just want to clean up this little area. It's like magic wand tool. Just kind of just click and hit Control X. Clear these little parts out, right. like so. Um, yeah, I think it looks makes it look a little bit better. All right, so now I think the can is pretty much done. Now what we can do is, let me hit control S actually real quick and save this um, advertisement tutorial, uh, G Fuel advertisement tutorial, and click OK of course, and it's starting to look, it's starting to come together, now what we can do is Position the can a little bit um, higher up. Let's see. I think we need to make it a little bit smaller. So, and yeah. I think that looks great right there. And now, what we can do is, I'm actually gonna I can delete those actually, because I need those for afterwards, so I'll just delete them for now and I'll make them. So make a new layer, and now what we're going to do is uh, select the elliptical marquee tool and just drag out like a little shape like this for the shadow. Now I realize that um, a shadow casting over this way would be more realistic however I tried that and it just didn't look great at all so I found the best result um, putting a shadow under the can now shadows in my opinion are probably the hardest thing to do in manipulations I've always struggled with shadows so I'm just gonna do a very simple shadow but if you guys um, have an idea of what you guys want to do for a shadow then of course go for it but anyways, we're gonna go to the filter and go to Gaussian Blur and drag this down a little bit. Uh, I think that looks good right there. Click OK. And now we can kind of move this around and stretch it, transform it a little bit bigger. Uh, perspective, just kind of drag this down so it's closer to the ground on this side. That's already looking great. Now, tattoos or shadows, tattoos, shadows are the 
most tedious thing in my opinion, so I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time I mean, something like that is already good. I'm already fighting with something like that. Um, so, it's, it's, the shadow is done. That's basically it. Um, I guess I could add these little cracks in in this little spacey thing up here, which I'm actually not going to do in this in this tutorial. It's already going to be long enough. But the cracks, um, let me get, just get those actually. Um, what I did is I just took some glass and I overlaid it. Um, I still forgot to do the, the frost and the backdrop. What am I doing? We do that real quick. So, uh, create another layer and just get like a really nice light blue, something like that. And make your brush big, like, or big, big, um, like, like that, and maybe a little bit smaller. And just kind of click, like, like so, and click again up here. Set this to soft light, and boom, pretty simple, nice glowing effect. Um, maybe even set it to normal and just drag the opacity down a little bit. Like that. Up to you. I'm going to go with soft light and just drag the opacity down a little bit. Like there. Nice. And I'm going to go back down to the vignette and I'm going to raise the opacity on this a little bit more. Nice. Okay, so now we can um, add the little wrappy thing, like the, the finishing touch on the can. Um, so make a new layer above everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our brush and we're going to click this button up here and we're going to select, I think, I don't remember which one it was, um, but we can, it was this one I'm pretty sure. But it's not too hard to make, I'll show you guys how to do it. With the spacing, let's see, at uh, like 90%-ish, let's see, I mean that's good. Um, and we're gonna go to shape dynamics and just kind of randomize this. Size jitter around 30%, angle jitter 40 something percent. Kind of start testing this out. Do something like that. And let's see. Something like that. Like so. And basically, I'm just going to hit Control U and make this a little bit lighter. Like that. So it's kind of more like ice. And. Control T, I'm gonna make it slightly smaller so it's more like, like around the can, if that makes sense. This looks pretty nice. And now what we can do is just kind of erase some parts so it's overlapping it, like going behind it. It's kind of hard to tell, it gets kind of lost and everything else. Like so. And erase this down here a little bit. So we can just see it coming right out of the bottom. I don't enti I'm not entirely sold on this up here. It just doesn't look right in my opinion. I did it with so much better on this one. But I'm not gonna mess around with it for the sake of the tutorial. But that's pretty much it. Uh, aside from the cracks, let's see yes, and this thing which I'm not gonna do in this tutorial. Um so Let's see, I'm just gonna grab the cracks real quick. All right, so here's like the cracked glass. I'll put this in the uh, project file as well, of course. And we're gonna drag this all the way down above the layer. So, and we're just gonna put this to linear burn. And it didn't do anything, did it? I thought it did. Anyways. We're gonna hit Control T and just kind of size this down. Um, actually, no. We're gonna leave this. We're gonna duplicate this, make a backup, hide that, and do something like this. Just put it somewhere and erase. This is really important. You guys want to erase like this little line right here so that it doesn't 
it looks like realistic because now it doesn't really look realistic now but once you get the pen tool just kind of click and do something like this um you guys can use the marquee tool as well um whatever you guys want to use control x and now it looks realistic because well cracks can't go up and over like the edge like that and this is looking all right. I'm gonna hold shift and just slide this over so it's under. And basically, we'll use kind of erase around and make the crack look natural, which is very time consuming. Um, but I'm gonna leave it like this for now and just kind of like just for the sake of the tutorial so it's not too long and just kind of move it over and control T, randomize it, uh, make it smaller. So, and just start erasing. For example, like put it right there, and just start uh, erasing like so. Now that looks too much like glass. Hide this, so it's just so it's just that. I think that looks a little bit better. Control J. And where else can we put it? Um, I'm gonna get rid of this bottom half so you don't really see a hole. It's just kind of like a crack expanding. And put it put it back here more so you can get some depth. And but of course we're gonna have to shrink this down a lot. So back there it would be a lot smaller. I think something like that would be real nice. Of course, we're just gonna get rid of this back right here. Um, so, it doesn't look that realistic. Maybe you can, uh, uh, like, warp the perspective a little bit. And just kind of mess with it. Obviously, it doesn't look that great right now. And I'm just going to delete it, and you guys can just start warping it and changing the perspective and whatnot to make it look better. But that's basically it. One last thing I actually forgot to do is just put in some smoke. So just go get a gra grab a graphics pack, or you guys can just find smoke. Um, I'm going to use Mixos graphics pack, which is right here. And basically what this does is it kind of gives that frost effect, like, it will give add that cooling effect that, like, that fog kind of like it's cold. So that is one fine detail that really helps sell the, the frost look. And we're going to go to, where is it, smoke somewhere in here, smoke, and hide this. Of course, I will leave this in the description as well. I'll leave everything in the description, except for the project file that will, I will put in there when we hit 50 likes. Uh, let's see what the smoke looks like. Oh. Uh, let's just find a smoke here. What's this one look like? This one, I think, will do. Um, put it below everything. Like that. And just kind of erase around it, make this bigger so that you can't see this line. So, and just kind of erase around so it's not expanding that far. I think something like that looks good. I'm gonna add a clipping mask and try to. Um, paint over it with blue. Um, grab our normal brush again and to make this bigger again and just kind of fill in this. Actually I'm going to grab a very very light blue, almost white, and just go over this so that it blends in a little bit more.
might change the blending mode. Actually, I'm just gonna leave it on screen and just duplicate it so it makes the effect stronger. And then bring this down a little bit. I think that looks nice. That's basically how to do it, of course. Um, from here, it's just fine little detail. Um, select everything, Control J, Merge Layers. There's a shortcut for it, but I don't know. I think, I, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. But that's just always how I've done it. And I Control J once more, so that we have two layers of everything. And of course, we're just gonna do Camera All Filter, and then blur, uh, blur it a little bit, and that's basically it. So filter, um, camera roll, or yeah, camera roll filter. And one, actually, let me crop this first. I forgot to do that, hit C on your keyboard, click enter. Now it's cropped. I'll um, go to camera roll filter. And one important thing I like to do in camera roll filter for this particular design is I really like to uh, dehaze this a little bit so it adds like a more of a colder foggy look like that and that just helps sell it even more so we can always mess with the blues a little bit which I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna make it like a little bit darker and just crank your Lower the exposure a little bit because you know it's dark. We're in space. Uh, maybe increase the contrast a tiny bit. Uh, honestly, guys, all this is is just moving sliders and looking how it looks, and just just use your eyes, <laughs> and um, yeah, use your eyes, and just see what looks good. Uh, I'm gonna the black even more, make this just pop. Um, if you click this button, um, you, no, it's this button. If you click this button, you, we keep clicking it, um, we can get a before and after. Um, so, uh, bottom is after, and let's see clarity, bump this up a little bit, and yeah, just. Decrease the vibrance a little bit. Increase the saturation. This is looking pretty similar to how it was before, but we haven't gotten that far yet. Um, skip over this. And go to the luminance, and we're gonna make this um, blue even lighter because it's ice. And get more saturated a little bit. And we can change the blue, so it's more of a lighter blue. Split toning is a pretty big one. Get a really dark blue for the shadows. 12, get a light blue. The highlights. Actually, I'm not even gonna add any highlights. Um, I'm just going to leave this at zero. And vignetting, we already did vignetting, so I'm not going to mess with that. Dehaze, we already did. That's basically it. Uh, yeah, and click OK. So this is our camera all filter. And it's pretty similar. I think I went a little too crazy with the, the saturation and the contrast here. Uh, but now what we can do. Hold shift, uh, select these two layers, merge them, and hit Control J again. Hit these two layers, and hit filter, blur, Gaussian blur, with satellite, two pixels, ish, and just start. Um, of course, just start on blurring, erasing the blur where you don't want the blur. So obviously the can, maybe here and just start bringing it into focus. So just basically just blur the front-ish and as it goes back, it gets even blurrier, like so. Maybe we'll add like a little bit of a focus right here. And that's about it. 
and yeah so that's basically it for the tutorial guys obviously I could have done a much better job like I did here minus the color correction I think I went a little bit too crazy with the contrast and the saturation on this one but that's basically it guys that's how you do like this little, cool little frost effect and this G Fuel advertisement um, if you guys did like Please make sure to give me a like, it helps me out a ton making these videos. And it also helps me out in the YouTube algorithm as well. So, um, a like is definitely appreciated. And go ahead and subscribe if you guys haven't already for more tutorials like this. Um, lately, I've been trying to do more Photoshop than Cinema 4D because I'm trying to balance my skills out. I feel like I'm just way better at Cinema 4D than I am Photoshop. And I think Photoshop overall is just a better skill to have than Cinema 4D. Um, so, like I said, I'm just trying to do more Photoshop stuff. If you guys have gotten this far into the video, um, please make sure to comment down below what you guys want to see. Like speed arts, uh, tutorials. Like I said, like I just said, I want to do more Photoshop stuff than C40 stuff. But Cinema 40 isn't going anywhere. I'm still opening it up um, frequently. Not as much as I used to, but I'm still working in Cinema 4D. And I will never stop making 3D stuff. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm not gonna. I'm still gonna make tutorials. I'm just trying to um, focus more on Photoshop now but that's basically it for the video guys thank you so much for getting this far into the video if you guys are seeing this uh, and yeah it's been instinct also let me know how you guys like this little face cam thing and if you guys want to tutorial on that I can do that as well so yeah that's basically it yeah that's basically it for now guys peace